Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs and I'm a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be going through the configuring Mac VRF VLAN aware learning byte. All right, so here is our topology and here we have an, a data center that is using an IP fabric and all the BGP underlay and overlay is already configured. And so you don't have to worry about that uh, with this learning byte. And so we have here, we have spine one, spine two, leaf one, leaf three, host one, two, three, and four. And notice how host one and host three connect to leaf one and host two and host four connect to leaf three. Now with that, we are using ERB or IDGE routed bridging. And so with that being set up already, we're going to configure Mac VRF, the VLAN aware service type. And so something else to point out here is that Host 1 and host 2 belong to VLAN V10. It's going to have VLAN ID 10. And then they are using the subnet 10.1.1.0/24 and the VNI 5010. And then host 1 has dot 1 and host 2 has dot 2 in that subnet. And then host 3 and host 4 are using VLAN V20, which uses VLAN ID 20 and are using the subnet 10.1.2.0/24 and the VNI of 5020. And you can see on the topology here that host 3 uses dot 3 and host 4 uses dot 4. So we can keep track of them that way. And then also we do have some IRB interfaces configured. And you can see that here in the topology as well. IRB 10 is using a uh, the virtual gateway address of 10.1.1.254. IRB 20, both leaves, and same thing with IRB 10. So IRB 20 is using virtual gateway address 10.1.2.254. And so the hosts are using that as their default next hop for their default route. So that's how they're going to be able to reach hosts outside their subnet. And so with that being said, let's go ahead and jump to the CLI of Leaf1 and get this started. All right, so here is the CLI of Leaf1. We already have the underlay and overlay configured. We're just focusing on the Mac VRF, uh, the Mac VRF configuration. So let's go ahead and go to routing instances. We'll call this, just call it Mac verf dash one for lack of a, a imagination on my part. And then we need to set the instance type. We need to set this to Mac verf. And then we have to set the EVPN configuration under here. Now, normally if you weren't doing this, if you were just doing normal ERB, then you'd be setting the EVPN parameters under the main instance, so not under a routing instance. And so what we do here, we set the encapsulation, I'm going to set that to VXLAN, and then what we can do is set the extended VNI list. And recall that we're using a 5010 and a 5020. And we could use the all statement for a shortcut to grab both of those, but we are just setting up those two VNIs with the accompanying VLANs. And so let's just be specific about that. And that's what makes it great about this configuration. You can do it either way. And then let's set the VTEP source interface. That's going to be the loopback interface. And then the service type. Now this is important because we set here, we have a few different options. We have VLAN aware, VLAN based, and VLAN bundle. Now VLAN aware, which we are doing here, allows us to configure multiple VLANs under the same routing instance. And then we have to set the interfaces that are going to be connecting to our hosts. Recall that host one and host three connect to leaf one. And so we're gonna say interface xe-0 slash zero slash three. That's the one that goes to host three. And then same thing, but four, which goes to host one. Then we need to set the route distinguisher. And that's going to be, we'll say 192.168.100.11. That's based off the loopback address of leaf one. And then we need to set the VRF target. And I'm going to set that to target colon 65,000 colon one. And of course it needs to match on the other side. And we'll see that when we get there. And then we need to configure the VLANs. Let's actually go under the VLANs hierarchy. And we're going to set V10 to use VLAN ID 10 L3 interface IRB.10. And then the VXLAN VNI is going to be 5010. And then V20, VLAN ID 20, L3 interface, IRB.20, VXLAN, VNI. 
5020. And that is our Mac Verve configuration. So we do need to configure the interfaces. You can see those aren't configured yet. So let's jump up to the interfaces and configure XE3, unit zero, family ethernet switching. And then we need to set the VLAN members. Recall this connects to host three. So this is gonna be V20. And then XE004, this connects to host one. So that's gonna be V10 for the VLAN. And let's commit that configuration. And then we'll jump to leaf three and do the other side of the configuration. So here is leaf three. Let's, well, first let's configure those interfaces. And so XE003 connects to host four, which is going to be V20. And we haven't configured VLAN V20 yet. We'll do that here shortly. And four connects to host two, which is going to be VLAN V10. And let's go to routing instance. Call this Mac VRF one and set the instance type. Set that to Mac VRF, Mac Verf. And then we're gonna just kind of repeat what we did on the other side on leaf one with some minor differences. So we need to set the protocols eVPN encapsulation. That needs to be VXLAN. And then the extended VNI list, 5010 and also 5020. And then when you set the VTEP source interface, that's gonna be the loopback interface. And the service type is going to be VLAN aware. And then interface, XE003 and four. And then the route distinguisher, going to be unique of course. And this is gonna be 13 colon one, which is based off the loopback address. And then the VRF target needs to match. And we set that to target colon 65,000 colon one. And then let's configure those VLANs. So V10, gonna be VLAN ID 10. L3 interface is gonna be IRB.10. And again, those IRB interfaces are already configured. So we don't need to worry about doing that right now. And then I also want to set the VXLAN VNI to 5010. And V20, VLAN ID 20, L3 interface, IRB.20, VXLAN, it's gonna be VNI 5020. And that should be our configuration. Let's go ahead and commit that and see if we can communicate between the hosts. All right, so here is host one. Let's go ahead and attempt to ping host two. And that looks great. And of course, host two is within the same VLAN. So what about, recall that host two is on leaf three. It's not connected to leaf one, whereas host one is connected to leaf one. So let's go ahead and ping host three. And it took a minute to pass those EVP and routes, or a couple seconds, two seconds. So we missed two, but it is working. That's great. And so let's go ahead and ping Host four. And the same thing's gonna happen here. Takes a you're gonna lose a few packets while those EVPN rounds EVPN routes initially get pushed around or shared. And so that looks good. So let's go ahead and leave that ping running to make sure that the EVPN routes stay where they are. And we'll look at leaf one and see some uh, we'll run some verification commands. All right, so here is leaf one. And the first thing I want to look at, let's look at the BGP summary command. And this will give us some information. And you can see here that we have the Mac VRF table and we're getting, there is route reflection happening. This is spine one and this is spine two. And so you can see that we are getting routes in that Mac VRF uh, routing instance. And so that's perfect. That's exactly what we want to see. And then the next command I want to show you is the run show Mac uh, VRF forwarding VXLAN tunnel endpoint remote. And you can see here what we have going on. You can see that the source uh, VTEP IP, that's leaf one, remote is leaf three. And you can see the uh, VNIDs that we're sharing here. And you can see also the, uh, the VTEP interface in use. And so let's look at uh, show Mac VRF forwarding. I think I just do interface, there we go. And we see the different interfaces involved. And you can see, uh, well, actually let's look at 
a little much here. Let's look at uh, XE003. And you can see the interface. You can see the routing instance name. You can see the logical interface, VLAN ID, and you can see it's in the state forwarding. And we can do that with uh, XE4 as well. And if we did these commands on Leaf 3, it would be very, very similar. So I'm not jumping between Leaf 1 and Leaf 3 since the commands are similar. So let's go ahead and what else could we run? Let's do, uh, yeah, let's do run show Mac ver forwarding uh, Mac IP table. And we can specify the instance. We only have one instance, so we don't have to specify it if you don't want to here, but I'm just going to specify it. And you can see some information here. You can see it's split up on a per VLAN basis. It shows you the routing instance name as well. But we have the different VLANs and the addresses and the MAC addresses associated with that. So you can see dot one and dot two here. And you can see there are MAC addresses. And you can see with dot two, even though it's the same same subnet, it's on a different leaf. So it's through a VTEF interface. And you can see the active source, dot 13, that is the loopback address of Leaf Street. And then you can see with dot one here that it shows a logical interface of XE004. That's a local interface to Leaf one. And so that's what it shows there. It, we, we're not going through a, a VTEP to get to it. We're not using a VTEP going through a VXLAN tunnel. And so same thing here with the uh, uh, VLAN V20. You can see the two interfaces here and you see something similar with the, the IP addresses. Host three, which is 10.1.2.3 is local using XE003 and host four, which is 10.1.2.4 is through the VXLAN tunnel using that VTEP interface. And you can see the active source is the loopback address, leaf three. And next I wanna look at the, show you the, uh, what is that? The eVPN database. And we could specify an instance. We don't have to since we only have one instance, but it doesn't hurt to do that. And of course, at the top shows you the instance name, and then it shows you a database of IP addresses and MAC addresses associated active source and uh, the VNIDs as well. And so you can get a lot of good information with from that as well. So keep that in mind. And so with that being said, let's look at Let's see, uh, dot two is on leaf three. So let's grab that MAC address here and copy that. And then let's do the run show route table. Table, we'll say um, MAC BRF dash one EVPN dot zero, then EVPN MAC address. And we'll specify that MAC address. We'll be able to find and see the routes that are associated with that MAC address. And you can see here the MAC is here. This, these are two type two routes and you can see that you have the MAC address and then this route you have the MAC address and the IP address as well. These are coming from leaf three. You can see the IP address associated with that. And so we've set up MAC verve and everything is working as expected. The hosts can talk to each other and well, more than just MAC verve, we set up VLAN aware MAC verve. And so we have multiple VLANs within a single routing instance and those hosts are allowed to communicate with each other and things are working as expected. So that does bring us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we uh, talked about how to configure and verify a VLAN aware service type with Mac BRF in a data center. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.